It's lovely. Well, nice to see you again anyway, Claudia. And yeah. uh, thank you for offering to uh, uh, explain about your story, about your journey. And everybody's journey is completely unique. Of course, it's fun. They are, yeah. Yeah. We were just saying we first probably were in touch back in 2012. Yeah. Yeah, about roundabouts there, about just over 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So you were starting to sort of really look into this sort of thing then. So what, what did you do initially? Or what, why, why did you get to that point? Well, I mean, in terms of the, the, uh, the, so, well, I got into this because of the pain, right? Because I just yeah. had this. So that started around 2006. And, okay. uh, so and it got gradually worse, and I went through sort and of. Just explain about the pain you were experiencing and how it started. Right. So I had uh, the main things where I had really bad pain in my feet and my stomach. So so at its worst, I was I could basically not walk at all because the pain was so bad. Mm -hmm. at the worst point, which was before I got into your sort of sessions and teachings, um, uh. For a few months, I was in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk. I, I was actually crawling in my flat, and crawling is not a good idea to get around. <laughs> for a long period of time. <laughs> yeah, I bought like knee pads and elbow pads to crawl around. It's wow. just not not good. So that didn't last for very long, but that was like the wor the worst point in terms yeah. of the pain with my with my feet. And then I also had really bad pain in my stomach. So I was in a really sort of limited diet for a long time. And even when it started to get better, like at the time when when I contacted you, uh, you know, I could eat most things, but like I couldn't touch caffeine or anything with sugar or any spices, alcohol, none of that. I couldn't like it would send me into days of pain if I yes. if I ate something like that. So so it sort of started gradually. I think about 2005, 2006, I started noticing here and there, I got really strong pangs of pain in my feet or in my stomach, both like uh, just little by little. I remember the first time I was in an airplane flying back from uh, from a holiday and and I, they served coffee on the plane. Mm -hmm. And I remember I and I, I drink a fair bit of coffee and and I had black coffee and and I just remember it was the first time I'd ever got this really bad stomach pain from coffee. And I was like, oh, God, like that's where did that come from? You know, like yeah. I'd never had that before. But, you know, then it went away. But then gradually those episodes kept getting worse and worse. And I started getting pain in my feet. And it just so I started then kind of putting in coping mechanisms. So I had like first I started having milk with my coffee, then cream. Then I couldn't have any caffeine. Then like it just went mm -hmm and like really restrictive yeah, yeah yeah extremely and um in terms of the feet first i started wearing trainers uh but then eventually it just, just i i got special orthotics made to try and somehow so essentially i was diagnosed with plantar fasciitis which is when you you stretch the fascia there's mm -hmm. a, like these micro tearings in it and that causes the pain that wasn't what I had, but it was the only thing that, from a Western science perspective, kind of matched closely. Yeah, it's a very common diagnosis, and it right. is always a, a mind-body condition. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and in terms of the gut, I mean, they couldn't really find anything. So I, I've i had a gastroscopy, a colonoscopy, gut fermentation tests, like all, pretty much anything that you could. I had really good medical insurance, which was great. Right, yeah. But I was able to eliminate all the Western science stuff out of the way. Even for my feet, I had uh, MRI scan, CT scan, probably had an X-ray as well. Mm -hmm. I had um, like biomechanical. They put me on a treadmill and yeah. like check how I walked and stuff like that yeah. to see if there's anything going on there. And, like all these things I, I had done and they just came back and said, we have no idea what's wrong with you. <laughs> we can see you in pain. But, uh, you know, sorry. <laughs> and I was kind of like, well, that sucks. You know? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. To say the least. I mean, it was it was a, it, it was a very dark period in my life. And uh, and um, yeah. so anyway, I got so I'll just tell you the story in a nutshell. Right. Yes, so, so this is how it all started. And I was in 
at its worst, like I was saying, I was in a wheelchair. I was in extreme pain. I mean, uh, it, 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 it is, uh, it, it, yeah, it was really hard. Um, I managed to hold the, the good thing was that I work in IT and I man I, I got permission to basically work from home permanently. Right. So I managed, and this was back in 2006, seven, eight. So that kind of thing was not standard. Not at all. No. <laughs> It's just like anybody works from home, no worries. You know, back then that was kind of you need special permission. And because I had doctor's notes and such to say, I basically couldn't walk the journey to the station. Yeah. You know, then they I, I took my laptop home and I was able to work from home. So so the the only kind of thing I think that kept me sane through all this was what one of the things was that I actually managed to hold on to my job. I managed to do that even if even when I was so I got some time off here and there, but on the whole I managed to keep going and and uh, sort of in some little small sense hold my life together and but so so the cave so the pain kept getting worse and worse and i'm just sort of condensing this into a mm -hmm. little little short story so i the pain got really really bad and i remember there was this point when uh i'd been in, at this point i would have been in this journey for about two years or so I remember I had this this moment when I realized that I wouldn't be able to cope uh, with this degree of pain much longer. I wouldn't be able, like I would have some kind of a breakdown or something. It was so, it was just anything that I would do, like uh, eat the wrong thing or, or somehow uh, put my food in the wrong way would set me into hours of pain. It was just getting to a point where I, I, I had this sixth sense that like, you will start to seek any way out of the situation yeah. if this continues. And that and I've never been, I've never had any idea of like suicide or self-harm, even at the worst points. But I knew that I even though I had a breaking point, essentially. I realized that. Yeah. And I yeah. that 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 I ha I had to basically kind of and at this point I had gone through all the tests. Yeah. The, Tests, the the colonoscopies and whatnot and the, the the feet all those things i had the special orthotics made which cost a lot of money and and nothing had come out of it and i was really desperate and so i knew that western science in a sense couldn't really help me it, you know there, there was there was no answers there you know yes, i was in this dark and desperate place and i i was in a lot of pain every day and i had this moment i realized I was coming to the end of the line. Like there, I couldn't continue. You know, I was in so much pain. You can't, you can't indefinitely, and you because when you live a normal life, that kind of a place doesn't even occur to people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When when you when you repeat, I consider myself a, to have a high sort of pain threshold and stuff. But I was I was at the end, and and when I had that moment, I realized that my life was on the line. And something in me just said, right, that's it. We're, all cards are on the table, as it were. I'm just anything, whatever this is, I'm going to look at it. What, Whatever it is, whether it be, whether I am somehow internally creating this or it's some kind of stress thing, whatever it was, mm -hmm. I'll look at it. And that decision to somehow let go of everything apart from whatever this is about yeah. changed it for me. Excellent. Right. So fast forwarding then to when did things start to change for you? It was very gradual. It wasn't instantaneous. Did you notice something from that point that when you let go and you decide you would try anything? Did you notice um, any shift there? Um, I can't remember exactly. The only thing I can remember is that there was a there was a sense of relief, mm -hmm. you know, and there was a sense of like, um, the, the pain still continued. There might have been some immediate re relief. I don't remember exactly the internals. I was so kind of in my own internal state, but it the, the, the benefits started coming pretty quickly, like within weeks or months. I started noticing very, very small things like, basically i started to notice that there was a relationship between this pain and my thoughts or my internal state you know mm -hmm. yeah. and 
And when I when I picked up on that link, I became hooked, like mm-hmm. completely driven to find out what that was about. And so all that that energy of like suffering and ah, what's going on with me went into this path yes. to work out the truth of it. Right. And, and this was still some years before I I you know got in touch with you. But mm-hmm. uh, so then I I started meditating and. Uh, really like several hours a day before work after work pr- pretty much all I can remember from that sort of year and a half phase in my life was I was sort of compelled to find out what was going on and there was this insane amount of pain in my life that was being created by something within me something he inside was causing this thing and yeah. I had to find out how that worked and and so I and that was really it. That that's that's what I spent all of my free time pretty much doing, apart from music. Right. So many meditations. So it wasn't like you were looking, seeking an an, an answer from outside. You were really meditating to seek answers. Yeah. The meditation was for me. It was like my scientific instrument, as it were. You know, it was my way of really looking with clarity internally. Yeah. To, to look at. You know, when I have a certain kind of thought or emotion or experience, where does that go? Like, literally, where does the energy of that go internally? Where does that go? And how does that then tie in with this pain? And in fact, when I look at that pain, what's what's there? You know, like, what's it? So in my feet, like, what? what, How does that get generated? What's the experiential link between this? thought arising and this pain happening in that time did you find any answers um, of your own yeah oh tons of them yeah the the main thing was that i started trusting my internal instincts a lot more and i really started paying attention to my internal experience and i still think that's that's been the most important factor in all of this when i had that yeah right i'm glad yeah, you know, when when I had that moment of like despair when I saw that I could possibly die from this and everything was on the line, that really the main thing was that I, um, I let go of this massive amount of cultural conditioning and yeah, and my own fears and anxieties about, you know, because there's like, well, if you're generating this thing if somehow unconsciously. Then the ego starts to think, oh, I'm somehow doing this. I am the one causing this. Yes. I am so so yes. then, you know, all your friends and family that are worried about you are, you know, because they were obviously really worried because, you know, my mom in particular, she was seeing how much pain I was in, but they couldn't do anything. Yes, yes. So Correct. so the the willingness to admit that it is somehow, it's not that you're causing it, but it's something that is happening within you. Yeah. In a yes. sense. So it sounds like you moved from despair to hope. Yeah. Yeah. But I would even say more that it, it's, yeah, hope came, but it was clarity. Right. It, yeah. It was really, so clarity it was, then created the hope. For yeah. Because beyond, even more important than my life, what became was the truth. And I call it, I, that's a word with truth. It, for me, it was this desire to discover what was going on because i really put my life on the line you know when i when at that moment i let go of everything because i realized that i had nothing to lose yes absolutely yeah. you know and there was a truth within you yeah so so you obviously did that for a while um and then what what was the situation over that time you know, just briefly so that in doing that and then actually reaching out um, and uh, coming up to find where you work. Yeah, so, you know, a few years passed and uh, I was meditating, looking into... So then I came across somebody I I knew in my family uh, had run into John Sarno's writings. Mm-hmm. And that was really the link. So I then started... So then I was like, oh, there's people writing about this. So I so started... At that point, sorry to stop you, uh, Trevor. At that point, where were you with your stomach and your feet? Just... Oh, it was still pretty bad. I mean, I had got from the disastrous sort of where I was in a wheelchair kind of level to where I could walk from my home to the office and back. And I 
could go and see people socially to some degree. Okay. Uh, but like I was still in a lot of pain and I was really limited with what I could do. And, you know, and I've always loved doing sports or fitness or, or going outdoors, going into the forest or, and I, I could really do n almost none of those things that I really love to do. So I, I was like, I would, I was surviving, but I was not living my life in any stretch of the imagination with how I wanted to. I think it's just useful for people listening to this to know where you were at at that point. Right. And then you came across Dr. Sarno's work. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so Sarno was, was helpful insofar as he broke through the Western scientific conditioning that says this, this thing doesn't exist. At the time, that was the position. I don't know what the position is now, but you know, scientifically speaking, this didn't exist. It, you, it's all in your head. You went to see a doctor, and I'd go, "Yeah, okay, you know, you know, so, 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 psychosomatic pain." All right, next. You know, it was, it was, it was not exactly something that you declare to the world because yes, you would be killed and and you would be seen as this something wrong with you. That, Definitely. You know, yeah. you're you're sort of seeking for attention. Or, I don't know. There was there was this kind of like the attitude was really not supportive in any way. Not at all. Not at all. And where sorry, where Sarno was the most helpful for me was just to kind of punch through that and go, actually, we have evidence. Actually, you know, I'm writing to tell you and the world that this there is truth here. Then this this is not just somebody's imagining and and you know. So he sort of opened the door, but then that was really it for me. It, it sort of didn't really go that far. And, you know, he had his ideas about, what did they call it? Um, there, was a, there was a word. So essentially his idea was around re repressed anger or repressed sort of fear, yeah. that kind of thing. There was a specific specific word which they had for it back then which i'm now forgetting but anyway so and he had this idea and and that's great you know and that does work to a degree i think it's a lot more nuanced and complex than that but you know it's like he started to paint the picture of yeah. what was what was actually happening out there with people yeah. mm -hmm. and, and uh and so i came in i got in touch with a lot of people and you were one of them and there there was another person in the u.s monty hufel his name oh, yes. was yeah and uh, and he was really cool mm -hmm. and, and and you know he essentially you know he was kind of explaining to me that you know a lot of people that read sarno kind going of come to him because it's like they just get you know it's it's like there's there's a door opened but it doesn't really go all the way as it were you know yeah. and so there's and, not not a lot in the books that tells you actually then what to do i think right. he was sort of really explaining the concept and really trying to get it out there um but the answer as far as he was concerned was then working coming to his um, courses you know either book recovery or you come and listen to his lectures um, and yeah. then you get referred on to the therapist but at that point it was all face to face there was very little that other people could do um, and so yeah there's so much more now yeah right Monty's lovely so yeah absolutely people often need more and often need more even with the books and the online programs anyway uh, to be able to see and, and get past the conscious yeah. 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 Um, so then, and and so then, I got in touch with you as well. So this would have been around 2012, um, mm -hmm. and all of that was really, really great in giving me sort of a framework within to look at these things and to also just have the the courage to really seriously kind of go and look at kind of start to build my own understanding of what's going on here you know yeah. because that it I, I honestly think a massive amount of this is just to have the courage to trust something within you that isn't reflected back from society or our un, or our collective understanding of reality yes. i like to call it our consensus reality you know right. it's not reflected back by the consensus reality that yeah you know people experience so yeah. You know, and, and so around that sort of time, 2012, 2013, um, yeah, I, I had a number of experiences that, and and I started getting into so uh, some spiritual teachers because the, 
what I realized was that, or started to see was that at the root of a lot of these, uh, the sort of pain points that I had, which was manifesting itself in physical pain was some either trauma or some identity that I was really holding on to, which mm -hmm. gave me a sense of uh, failure or, 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 or that I had, I hadn't been good enough as a human these being. Fa these faulty beliefs that we all yeah. hold that are basically, you know, we're born innocent little babies. And then like you say, it's the cultural beliefs, religious beliefs, all these other beliefs that start and what we're facing, that we start to sort of create these layers and these faulty beliefs that, that of course then impact the everything around us. But that's not the truth of who we are deep below that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the, the next sort of logical route for me at the time was I sold out sort of Eckhart Tolle's uh, writings. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the book, The Power of Now, was very uh, powerful for me and very, very sort of helpful. Mm -hmm. um, Adyashanti was another one. He's just a, basically like a spiritual teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, and this sort of different path started opening up for me where it the, the initial thing for me was essentially pain relief. Like I needed to find out the, the truth of the matter because I was in so much pain. Yeah. And slowly... It started changing from just that into what's what's actually what is this going on here? Who am I really? Like what? Truth of who you are. Right. Yeah. And and so it became this like a spiritual journey in a sense. I mean, I use the word spiritual, but it, it's it's really about you know in a sense understanding for myself you know what what do I perceive life to be. You know what is the nature of it? What what is it about in a sense? What's what's kind of going on here, beyond the sort of cultural conditioning and stuff like that? Yeah. So, yeah. so that that's kind of what it became about, and and that was all connected with the suffering. But then when I had started to see, like I was saying, when I started to see through a lot of the layers of that suffering, it it transitioned into this bigger thing, which was really about you know. So the suffering brought me to a point. But then there was this momentum that I was kind of going for, like I was questioning everything and, and a lot of the old beliefs and fears and reasons, motivations that I had for doing like my job or mm -hmm. playing my guitar or, or, or whatever had started to kind of not function from the old centers or the old place, you know, anymore. So I was no longer doing them just because my dad had been critical of me when I was a kid or, or because of, so I had some sense of needing to appeal to my peer group, you know, from university or something, you know, it, it became a little bit more closer to home as it were, you know, yes. Through yes. That, and through that um, aligning, it sort of, my life just started, started to shift and, and uh, yeah, so, so that ever since then, it's still, I still do get pain, but it's sort of, I can see where it's coming from and I can usually see even if before it gets there, because I can see that there's some pattern that gets activated in my life. Some, uh, something about me goes into like a little bit like that, you know, and then, and you can say, oh, okay, that's interesting. So then you go and maybe you sit down and you, you work out what's going on there. And then generally that lets go, you know, yeah. Yeah. but. But is it, are you now able to do whatever you want to do in your life? yeah 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 now i so get where you're coming from because i'm definitely on my own journey in a similar pattern definitely i can't tell them and others to work in similar ways so definitely and i so see that that these that we've got to get uh, you know we understand that these faulty beliefs are creating these thoughts and uh and then emotions and pain but actually it's deeper than that much deeper than that we need to get get hold of these beliefs start to get like you said finding the truth of who we are uh and going through these beliefs starting to break those down and recognize that's not the truth of who i am you know that i'm not good enough why am i not good enough but you can see how we've learned that as we've as we've grown up but it's not the truth of who we are uh, yeah. and yet this is what our ego keeps telling us um, and how yeah. we to create a lot of fear so as they say it's a, it's a between fear and love isn't it and what we're looking at is actually just this love and this unconditional 
rather than living in fear all the time, doing things because we feel we ought to, should do, or um, because we're scared of what people might think, or whatever. Those yeah, are creating yeah. so much stress in, in everybody's lives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the world has changed so much since uh, since I kind of went on this journey, and even even since I really started to was able to start living my life so I, I'd say I've been sort of so it's now 2023 this whole thing kicked off about 2006 mm. I'd say it probably took me about 10 years to really start to live my life in the way that I wanted to mm. and there was an initial peak of really extreme pain that almost was looking back at it now was necessary to push yeah. me on look I made the right choice yeah. In, in letting go but it's a gamble in a sense it's, from it's like, you like know. ego going no, no 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 don't do this don't do this <laughs> yeah right right well what I meant to say was that I made the right choice now and I'm very glad it all happened but it is a massive gamble because I could have died in the process you know so that's what I mean is that it's you really don't at that point I didn't know what to do I, and the only thing I could kind of trust was what do I really in some innocent or so, any anything that I can go for that will somehow guide me to some innate sense, you know, yeah. and that was kind of really it was beyond just what I logically thought it just sort of came out of somewhere and I let go, you know, and I think this is where a lot of people struggle is that they are up here. They're in their thinking mind, they're analysing. I have so many people who, who come to me saying, but I've read all the books, I know it all. You know, why aren't I any better? I've done every course there is, I've read every book there is. And that's because you're still up here in your thinking mind and overanalyzing and trying to work it out. And like you say, it takes a lot of actually letting, going, letting those layers go and really sinking down and being in the body and then allowing these things yeah. and to become aware of them so that you can then deal with them. So if you were going to, um, I'm going to wrap it up soon because I know people sort of like to have sort of shorter rather than really long sessions. It's nice to have a few that are close to half an hour. Um, if you were to advise anybody, obviously many people when there was, you were saying, oh, I meditated for hours you know, before work or whatever. If there were simple things, simple things for people uh, that you would advise people to start looking at or doing now, um, to help them if they're interested in what you've done what would you recommend well the first thing is that when you're in a lot of pain essentially you think that there is something terribly wrong and this is a mistake mm. when I was in a wheelchair it was like the worst punishment and I was I often remember thinking like what did I do to deserve this this is like it's terrible it yeah. is it's the worst thing you could imagine and in a sense, I've really come to see that it, it, it was not a mistake. I, it was something that was put there to give me the opportunity to change, you know. Absolutely agree with that. And that, that perspective is, I'm, I'm not, look, anybody that's in a lot of pain, I'm not going to tell them what to think or do in a sense, because that, that is such a difficult place to be in, you know, and you have to respect how you, how you feel internally. All I would say is that is that you know there is a choice that you have in terms of how you how you choose to see your situation, and if you have the grace to to see that there is more to this than your personal current predicament of pain. There's a bigger thing going on here. You may not be able to appreciate that all the time. There may be glimpses that you see, but if you can just start to twitch that a little bit to change it to see you know there is an opportunity also here you may not see how right now you may not understand how you get to a better place but that if you have just a little bit of hope and an appreciation of a bigger thing happening that is beyond your ego we're all the ego is a limited thing it has a limited understanding of what we are capable of you know mm -hmm. There is often there is something coming into your life with these situations that is is bigger than you, and you just don't quite see how that's going to play out. And at the end of the day, there are no guarantees of anything. But 
the only thing I would, if I could talk to myself back then, I would say, if you can, even if from the smallest place possible, try and trust it. Mm -hmm. Try and trust the journey that you're on. It is bigger than you. You know, yeah. it's not about gratifying your ego ultimately. You and know, also, that's difficult to do while you're still fighting the thing. Yeah. And I think it was when you surrendered, then you were able to start seeing this. But while we're fighting and desperate to get rid of it uh, and seeing it as a punishment, and feeling a victim to it, that can be very hard. But when you can get to that point of just pausing and acceptance is the first thing, just accepting it, um, that then can make that so much easier um, to, yeah, just start seeing. Yeah. And the only other thing I'd say is trust your instincts um, and treat other people with kindness. Um, you know, when you're in a lot of pain, it's really easy to lash out. Uh, there is such a thing as kind of what comes around goes around you can call it karma you can call it whatever you like but um, other people in our life reflect back our own consciousness extremely accurately you know if you develop the empathy to 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 not lash out to somebody when perhaps socially you're you're justified to do so or or you know whatever and you're able to treat other people from a place of love that's bigger than that than just that sort of lashing out then they do come back to you you know life is not some separate thing that has no relationship with anything else you know these things are all connected you know so trust if, if you can trust your instincts and and try to see that we're all here in a sense whether you're in a lot of pain or not we're all here trying to make it through we're all here trying to you know live our lives and, and be happy mm. you know and 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 because when you're in that place of suffering it becomes a very very self-centered place too and to a degree it has to be because you have to work out your suffering and you have to get to the bottom of it yeah. but really when you start to come out of that you know everybody's in the same boat you know some of us are pushed into this place to get into this wacky stuff about that isn't confirmed by anything else and we're kind of out there mavericks going into the sunset you know going oh we're gonna work this specific thing out you know you haven't we haven't learned everything yet you know <laughs> but 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 you know there's empathy and love towards your common fellow human being is incredibly powerful in life you incredibly. know and i think what can help with this is is just one thing to do is recognizing that if somebody is being rude to you or angry to you to actually notice it let that go and look at okay what's this saying about me you know if i'm seeing that person as angry and actually really sit down close your eyes quietly and say i see myself as angry that can be so powerful and then be able to just sort of look at that and let that go um, yeah. because you're absolutely right what we see in others is the reflection yeah and also take a responsibility yeah what's going yeah. on yeah it is i mean yeah the final thing i guess uh you have to become very good at observing the evidence in your life and i don't mean this in a sort of a scientific way that might, whatever that means to you but essentially you have to go outside of what you currently think is real in a sense you know and that's a big thing for a human think being to do you know it's because to a degree, what you consider to be real is causing you suffering, right? It is a set of assumptions, whether they, whether you're consciously aware of them or not, or whether they're somehow in your biology or in your cultural condition that you've just taken for, on for granted, you know, and you're not questioning them. To a degree, that may be causing some of your suffering, you know? And so to, to, to start to break down what we consider to be real, it takes incredible uh kind of subtlety and and you have to see very clearly what's going on and you have to if if you're really serious about kind of i had to go through this because i was gonna die right that's a serious thing i knew that I, there was no way out for me you know so it pushed me and now i look at it and i go i was lucky so i had to get yeah. very, i had to become like a sherlock holmes when it comes to my internal experience to really 
but that emotion right there that thought what is that how does that what where does that go in terms of the pain mm. so i would sit there and i would look at something arising and i would go well, that's that's anger right that's deep anger about what my boss told me this morning i really didn't like that okay but why am i experiencing that so strongly it was a flippant comment that should, you should just mm -hmm. be able to let it go well, why am i holding on to that okay so there's a bigger piece so actually the reason i'm holding on to it because i'm i it's so important to me to prove myself as intelligent in this kind of a workplace situation you know and this thing was making light of that and it's really hard for me to let go of that okay so what where does that come from so where so this this need to prove myself why do i have such a need to prove myself okay so so then maybe things come about my family and my relationship to my father or where i was brought up okay so there's a lot of tension in that space so so what are you doing here but but this kind of a process is not a it's not for the faint-hearted in a sense and it's, it's not all mental either it's not about sitting there thinking no. and, oh i wonder all this this is about going inward isn't it closing your eyes and feeling and noticing and gaining insights and, and yeah rather than searching outwardly and in your head yeah i'd say that's like the 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 logical thinking mind is a is the sort of gateway often yeah. it's a starting point mm. you may notice that these em emotions don't often sort of they may a thought may arise about them but there's a lot more going on in your body you may have noticed your body getting tense you may notice particular emotions centering in a particular location so then you have to go in there and say what's going on why am i tensing up what's going on in the body what's the yeah. body telling me what's the message from there and allowing it not fighting just being curious yeah i think we could go on and on with this it's, uh, I, I love this topic but I think we're going to need to bring this to an end halt. But thank you so much, Roma. I know there can be so many people where this has opened up something more to them. And a couple of things I would suggest if people want to know more. Um, one, as you mentioned, read Eckhart Tolle. I think you know his work, his YouTube videos, wonderful. And someone else uh, out there with all this, Michael Singer. His books are wonderful. Really, really lovely to uh, and start understanding this a little bit more. Many more talk about this as well but they're, they're a good start even Muji, um the uh, youtube videos are, are wonderful yeah. um, Adi Adishanti was another one that really resonated with me I think he has a really sorry who, who was that uh Adi Ashanti right uh, okay I've not heard of him I'll send you the name a, a... we can add it to the bottom of the video yeah yeah uh I'll, I'll send it to you in the chat now actually uh, well, don't worry, do, do it later, because when we, we'll be recording this and putting it on the website and our YouTube channel, and yes. we'll put it in the uh, text as well, uh, yes. so that if people want to find out more, they can. But yeah. for now, I think we'd better call this a halt, and uh, I just want to really thank you, Tomo. Uh, this is wonderful talking to you again, and really interesting to hear Great. your journey since last yeah, year. Thank you for having me. I, uh, everybody if you're in pain you know there is hope and and there is life is an incredible journey in in the end but um yeah i wish everybody the best of luck with this thank you so much Tomo.